What's going on, Lead Gym Beast? Matty Eyes here, Leech for Locals. In this video, I'm going to be walking you through step by step how to set up your Facebook business manager the correct way. Just some basic things that you want to get done. Just get it out of the way. Um, it's kind of annoying stuff, especially since they can, uh, Facebook continues to change their platform and their interface constantly. Uh, so it's hard to find this stuff. That's why I want to give you a roadmap. Just X, Y, Z, do this, this, and this. All right. So you can get your business manager up and running. Uh, it's be really good for clients too, uh, if you do client work uh, as well. And uh, we're going to be covering, you know, verifying your domain, setting up your aggregated events uh, for the iOS 14 update, conversions API, all this uh, uh, just weird, techy, annoying stuff that um, you want to have set up because it's going to help your campaigns perform better, as well as uh, their trust signals with Facebook. It's going to help make sure, um, I mean, it's no guarantee, but help prevent your ad accounts and your overall business manager from getting disabled as well. Because when you have this stuff set up, uh, they're, they're really big trust signals with Facebook, right? So make sure you stick to the end, get all of this stuff done. The good thing is, is that once you have it done, you really don't have to mess with it again, uh, again, unless you're doing client work or you have multiple different brands, but at least you're going to know how to do it. All right. So please help me out, guys. Uh, and smash that like button if you find the video helpful. It does help with the algorithm. Uh, make sure you subscribe. Check out the links in the description. Join the Facebook group, all that good stuff. All right. Let's rock and roll. So um, let's first cover how do we set up a business manager, right? So I'm going to open an incognito window here. All right. And you're going to go to business.facebook.com and you're going to log in uh, and I can go ahead and create an account. It's going to prompt you to log in here. From there, uh, you're going to have a, uh, what is it, like a couple of steps, like naming your business name, put your your name in there, obviously. And then there was uh, one other thing there. Uh, actually, that might be it. Um, once you once you enter that information, you're going to get a confirmation email. Go ahead and click that email, uh, the, the link in that email. And then once you do that, your business manager is pretty much set up, right? So let's go to your business settings, all right? And uh, I'll show you what we want to get set up here, right? So we're going to cover the pixel. Like I said, verifying the domain, basic business information you want to get set up here. And uh, also, guys, too, um, any, anytime you want to get to your business manager, just go to business.facebook.com. You can get here from the Meta Business Suite. Um, I'll have a link down below. You can check out the, I guess, like tutorial I did or overview of the Meta Business Suite to learn how to get here uh, again. But otherwise, just go to business.facebook.com anytime you want to get to your business manager. Uh, just keep it simple. All right. So the first things that uh, I recommend are uh, getting your uh, your domain verified. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and knock that out. So you're going to go to data sources here. Uh, no, that's a lie. Not data sources. Brand safety. My apologies. Click on domains. This is uh, you want to use a domain that uh, you're going to be running ads to, I guess. Um, even if you're using lead forms and messages, uh, just the the main domain that you use for generating leads, sales, appointments, etc. That's the domain you want to verify. So what you're going to do is uh, you're going to add a domain here. All right. You're going to type the domain in. Uh, let's see. I wonder if I could do a test one. Uh, test test.com. Let's see if that works. Hey, it did. All right. So uh, from here, we want to, the easiest way that I found to do this is to change this right here to update DNS TXT record. And all you're going to do is you're going to copy this to your clipboard right here, this TXT record. We're going to go to go, uh, well, whatever, wherever you have your domain purchased, you want to go to your DNS records. I always recommend GoDaddy for domains. Their support is phenomenal. They're very, uh, it's very easy to use. So that's what I recommend, but totally up to you. All right. And uh, let's see here. Let's find our domain. I'm just going to, we'll do leads for locals for now. And actually, I think we could have clicked the three little dots there, but that's all right. Okay. We are going to, I don't know if it ever comes up. Manage domain. So GoDaddy changed their interface a little bit too, but whatever. Manage domain, manage CNS, all this stuff just to get to one place. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know why it can't be more easy. All right. Once you're here, you're going to add a record. So add. The type is going to be TXT. The name is going to be uh, the at symbol. Or yours might be host. Uh, some, some are a little bit different. Um, just the value, is you, you want to paste in what you got from Facebook uh, into the value section. And then if there's another field here, just put the at symbol. That's it. And then the TTL, I usually do one hour, add record. 
And then you're going to come back over, verify domain. You probably need to refresh this a couple of times. You might need to wait 30 minutes. Uh, so if I refresh this too, one thing that I will point out, because uh, this is easy to, uh, to miss, is if you refresh, it automatically goes back to the original selection here for verifying your domain. You've got to make sure that you change it back to update DNS uh, TXT record, verify domain. All right. Once your domain is verified, you're good to go. Then you can actually set up your, uh, your, your events and all that. We'll get to that in a second. All right. So that's step, I don't know, 130, I guess, whatever. Anyways, uh, next, the, uh, the other thing that you can do, uh, so let's go to business info. I do recommend this and, uh, just put like your primary page right here. Click edit, put your primary page, business details. Don't even try and steal this stuff, uh, because, uh, it's, it's old data. So it doesn't matter anyways. Uh, obviously you want to put updated data there and you can go, uh, you can go ahead and verify the business if you want. I don't think it's necessary. Um, the main things are these business details right here. Again, these are just trust signals with Facebook that, the, that you're a legitimate business. It's not a fake account. You're not going to be spamming people. All right. Uh, so it, it really helps to make sure that your stuff doesn't get banned. Okay. So go ahead and get that done. Uh, two factor on authentication. Uh, this should actually be on. I'm not really sure why it's not, but admins only. Once you do this, um, you can refresh the page. It's going to prompt you to log back into Facebook. And then it's going to ask you, do you want to use your Google Authenticator app? Do you want to use a text message? I recommend just doing a text to, to keep it simple. It's going to send you that text message, put that code in. You now have two-factor authentication enabled, all right? Again, another trust signal with Facebook, all right? Uh, once you do that, go back to business.facebook.com, go back to your business settings, all right? Uh, let's see, Security Center. Uh, was there anything in Security Center? Um, yeah, it's just two factor authentication. So, uh, we already got that done. Um, you go ahead and add a payment method. Uh, if you want to, I would say just go ahead and knock that out. Right. Uh, just really quick, add a new payment method, go ahead and put your card on file. Not going to charge anything. Um, it's just whenever you start running ads. All right. Uh, let's see, let's go ahead and get your pixel set up. So de uh, data sources, we're going to go to pixels here. All right. Add pixel. I'm just going to name it test one, two, three pixel. And name it whatever you want. Click continue. Now, what I recommend, uh, so let's go ahead and set the pixel up now. I recommend, uh, again, manually add pixel to code. Go ahead and grab this code. Put this in a Google Sheet. Go ahead and put it into your main funnel uh, as well because for whatever reason, Facebook makes it very difficult to get your Facebook pixel again later if you need it. So store it somewhere convenient that you have easy access to it just in case. I don't know why they make it so difficult, but it is what it is. Uh, where you typically want to put your pixel. So if I go into go high level, for example, that's where we have uh, all of our funnels. So let's go to my funnel here or my accounts. Actually, I could have just gone to any of these, but whatever. All right, you're going to go to your funnel or your, ma your main website, whatever, wherever you're sending traffic. All right, open up the funnel or website and you're going to go to settings. Wherever you can paste the code, you want to paste the paste your pixel into the head tracking code here, and then click save. All right, now we don't rely on the pixel as much anymore. Again, because of Apple iOS update, um, it's just not as it's just not as reliable. But it's good to have. All right, so go ahead and get that done. Keep it somewhere uh, simple. Uh, we can actually go ahead and exit out of this, and uh, I'll show you a couple of other things um, as far as like adding like uh, team members and stuff too. Um, you do want to add your page. So you should already have a business page set up. If you don't, go ahead and create that. That's not what this video is for. There's plenty of videos on YouTube to do that. Maybe I'll do one later. I don't know. But you do want to have your business page set up. Go ahead and click add. Um, you can actually create a new page right from here if you want. But um, I typically just recommend uh, add your page that you already have. You're going to type in the name of your business page. It should pop up right here. Click add page. Good to go there. And then go ahead and create an ad account. Okay. So again, add an ad account, go ahead and name it. It's going to prompt you to put in, you know, your, your payment details and all that stuff. All right. And you're good to go with that. Now, if you ever want to uh, add people, uh, like add team members to your business manager or your ad account or your business page, whatever, I'm going to show you how to do that really quick. So we're going to click on people under the users tab, All right, You're going to click add and you need their email address. You're going to send, uh, send an email to them, uh, it's basically an email invite. I'm just going to type in an old email address here. And this just depends on what you what you want to give them access to. 
Uh, I always request admin access whenever I'm doing client work. It just makes it so much easier uh, because a lot of times business managers are not set up properly and I need to do all this stuff. So it just depends on uh, what role you want to give them. I'm going to go ahead and do uh, admin access for now. Click next. And then here's the thing. You want to make sure that you select the business page here as well as right here. I'm just going to do test business loan there. Uh, and then what you want to do is scroll down where it says full control. Again, this just depends on what role you're giving them. Um, but you know, you can give them full control of the page. Uh, don't click invite yet. Cause we're not done. Uh, the new pages experience. Um, I think we just turn all this stuff on. Yep. All right. And then, uh, don't forget the ad accounts. All right. So select the ad account that you want them to control. All right. Manage ad accounts. And then you click invite. Once you click invite, that's when they're going to get uh, a link that they need to click to accept that invite. And they'll, they'll have the role of whatever you gave them uh, in that invite. Okay. Now let's go ahead and get your events set up. This is what people, I think, uh, what a lot of people struggle with. And I totally get it because it's very confusing. Uh, it's not very clear where you need to go to do this stuff. So let me walk you through it. We're going to go to events manager. <clears throat> now, if you have, uh, if you just made a brand new pixel, um, again, you need to make sure you have your pixel on your funnel or your website, go to your website, like visit the actual page or the funnel page and refresh the page a couple of times. Maybe do it even in, in incognito window as well. All right. You want, basically you're, you just want to trigger the, uh, and fire the pixel off. OK, now, if you don't if, if your pixels already been getting data, then you don't need to worry about this. Uh, you should see this right here. OK, um, if not, uh, let me see if I can find one that is not set up. Create programs. Let's see, all of these are. Uh, I was hoping to show you an example of that, but honestly, it's not not the end of the world. Um, but basically it just, it'll like, if you have a brand new, uh, a Facebook pixel, it's going to say like configure web events or something like that. You don't need to do that. You just need to fire the pixel. Um, you might need to just refresh the page where your pixels at a couple of times, and then you'll see it like this. Okay. So this is the fun part. All right. So we need to get conversions API set up and then the Apple iOS events, whatever. All right. So the first thing that we want to do is uh, click on settings. And then we're going to scroll down, see where it says conversions API set up manually, click get started. Okay. Let's click next, next setup. It's one of those things. I don't know why they don't just automatically do this, but anyways, so you want to choose the events that are relevant for your business. I'll just give you an example for most of my clients. It's going to be under financial services, view content, uh, lead schedule and submit application. You choose whatever works for your business. All right. Um, click continue. Once you have those selected, now you need to do this for each one of these events that you just selected. You need to scroll down, click all of these boxes. This is all of the data, I guess, that is being collected with this conversion API. Again, I don't know why they don't just automatically do this, but you need to make sure you do this for each one. Okay. Once you do that, for, uh, for every single event, click continue. It's going to have you go ahead and review it, continue. And let's see, uh, and then finish. That's it. So I'm not going to finish this because I don't actually want to do that. All right. Now, uh, let's see, let's go back to data sources here. All right, cool. All right. Once you have your conversions API done, then we will, uh, you should uh, be able to scroll down and see aggregated event measurement. This is basically the events you need to set up for Apple iOS 14 update, whatever. Oh, all right, <laughs> go ahead and click this, configure web events. And uh, you can only do this once your domain is verified, guys. So make sure you, you, you get that done. All right, uh, so once you, once you have your domain verified, you'll, you should see this right here. Let's go ahead and just verify domain. Oh, wait a minute. Nope, I didn't mean to do that. I don't even want to do that. Uh, let's go to this one here and we'll click on manage events. All right, see up here at the top right where it says add events. So you can add a total of eight events. Again, pick the top eight that are relevant to your business. The, the four, the, here's the four 
that I mentioned earlier that are most relevant to mine. So you're going to click add event. All right, right here, little window pops up or the field pops up. You're going to select your pixel that you just set up and then you're going to choose the uh, each event again. So just the same, like the same events that we just chose for the conversions API. Uh, you can go ahead and choose all of these and then you can actually rearrange them like this based on priority. I don't think it makes that big of a difference, but whatever. All right, once you have those uh, added, then all you do is click apply. And guess what? You're done. <laughs> those are the main things for your, your business manager. Now, you might be wondering, like, why do I need conversions API and stuff like that? Um, that's really good for, I mean, that's a little bit more advanced for this video, but you can actually take those, connect them to go high level. And um, I've actually done a video on that. I'll, I'll have a link down in the description if you guys want to check that out. Uh, but basically that allows you to send data directly to Facebook without having to use the pixel. Like uh, you get really good data that way. So anyways, guys, um, I hope that was helpful. That's how you want to set up your business manager. Get those things done. As you can see, it didn't really take us too much time to do it. So um, you just need to know the steps to, to actually get it done. And that's where I think people uh, really struggle. So um, hopefully this was helpful, guys. Uh, if you get stuck on anything, you have additional questions, go ahead and drop a comment down below. And uh, maybe I'll make a separate video uh, just kind of cleaning this up. But these are the main things that you want to get set up with your business manager in order for it to run properly, not get disabled, uh, get the best data uh, from your campaigns, et cetera. All right. So hope you guys are crushing it. Talk to you in the next one.